first ship was the aircraft carrier, and we were over there and started bombing in 1964. So, so you were on a carrier in the Gulf of Tonkin in 1964? Yeah, yes. Just we made three cruises on that carrier. Which carrier was it? The Coral Sea, CBA 43. So then that must have been not long after the Gulf of Tonkin resolution then in 1967. So, what was your job? I was a BM, BM3 at the time. So a, I, went, a, I went aboard a seaman apprentice, of course, or the boot camp, and then I got... So you were you were boatsman's mate, kind of a the a, a job where you kind of do a lot of different things on the on the all ship. deck. It's all deck work, you know. Sure, yeah. Replenish ships, you know, anchor and more and all that stuff. Boats, small boats. Sure. So you're in the Vietnam theater in '64, uh, and then you're back in '69, focusing on '64. Do you remember? Do you have a recollection of any of the planes that flew off the aircraft carrier being shot down? Uh, I remember them not coming, a few not coming back. So, yeah, yeah. And I, we've seen them come back shot up. But, uh, uh, you you saw planes that came back from bombing missions? That well, they had crap, you know, they had holes in them. So. Yeah. Let's say that you're below decks as a young sailor. Um, you know, and you're there in the in the chow hall, and you know another sailor just asks you, you know, what are we doing here? Why are we off the coast of Vietnam launching planes to bomb uh, over North Vietnam? What what did that war mean to you in 1964? It's very early. Well, we didn't really know. I mean, what was going on? I mean, we heard about that Turner Joy attack and uh, in the the other destroyer. Yeah. And, you know, it was all, all a part of it. So, I don't... yeah. So you really didn't, you're there in 64, but you really didn't, if somebody asked you, what is this all about? Why are we here? You really didn't know. Uh, no, I don't know. You know, what did, what did we know? We just do what we're told. Sure. So you have that first tour in the Gulf of Tonkin. And then you return to Vietnam in 69. What was your... Well, I went back there again, uh, again before I went on a boat. I, I, I re-enlisted for the Sacramento in 67, went aboard the Sacramento, and we went over there in January 69, and the 68, December, January. So you went, went back over there on a tanker. Oh, so you went, all right. So you went back to Vietnam a second time, and where were you? Where were you this time? Were you based out of Da Nang or Cameron Bay? No, no, we were a uh, home port was Seattle, but we were always in Bremerton when the ship was in the States for yard work. Okay. So we loaded our ammo in the States, went over to uh, Vietnam, of course, and then uh, when we were empty, we'd go back into Subic Bay and load up, load up ammo, fuel, and stores. I see. And go back okay. on the line. Where did you where did you drop off the ammo at Cameron at Da Nang or Oh no no the ships at sea. So did they they oh so the helos then would come out and pick up uh, no replenishment we'd send rigs over you send they give up uh what they call it Burton rigs Highline rigs and you send everything over in a net on a pallet with a hook. Okay. Like a so kind of like a yacht and stay rig inside the. And, and but it's that it's all at sea. The other ship is receiving. I we see. were the send attendant ship. So the second time you were um, in the Vietnam theater, but but pretty far removed from the action. Oh yeah, we weren't. Second. We never went inland. Hopefully. Yeah. So then you go back a third time, in uh, around the middle of 1969, and what, right. what kind of boat were you on then? Well, we went to school first, but was, I was assigned to the Riverine course. Well, I didn't barely know what it was. And, wow. So you go from a, an aircraft carrier to, um, is, is it a tanker, that second ship? Yeah, it was one of the newer ones, it was, uh, AOEs. There was only four of them. What kind of boat were you on in the Riverine force? Uh, a tangle boat, ATC, armored troop carrier. 
That's the one you've seen the ones with the flight deck. Yeah. They were the more modern ones. Once previously had the canvas top. And so the mission, what was the basic mission of these boats? Well, carry troops, drop troops up, pick troops up. Uh, I guess they're supposed to done a lot of service. We we done very little because I wanted there two months. So I didn't see much. But uh so you were there May through May, June, July of 69? Right, July. And were you down in the Delta? Yeah, it was down and down. It started down in Dong Tam. That was uh, the home base of the Riverine, of course. And the Army 9th Infantry Division were also uh, based out of there. What, um, um, what was your job aboard that... Um... That craft in the Delta. Oh, I was a boat captain. So you were in charge of that of that boat. Yeah, we had seven men crew. That was the boat captain. So you, uh, by this point, were you an E six, E seven, E six? Yeah, I was E six this time. Okay, E six. So you are part of the Riverine Force then for two months. Um, you're dropping troops off. You're picking troops up. Um. What sort of things did you see? Well, you know, I mean, obviously you're in a combat zone. Um, obviously, these soldiers you're dropping off are going to experience combat. Um, the soldiers you pick up have been through combat. So when you think about all those missions, what kinds of things did you see that, you know, drove home to you that it was a combat zone that you were in? Okay, let me see. I was in River Bond 15. We get over there, and they immediately put us in the River Bond 13 to go up this Operation Slingshot. We didn't know, even know what it was. Going up towards Cambodia, there were two rivers. I don't know. They, I guess they formed, looked, looked like a slingshot on the map, and uh, all the way up, one river on the right, one on the left, and they all the way up into Cambodia, and they had outposts on each river, three on one and three on the other. And we, two days later, after we got on the boats, we leave the crew, got on the boats, we were on our way up there. So uh, that's where we, we got a uh, boat in front of me got hit one night. Yeah. How, how we, did never it, go, we never got hit. How, how was the boat? Ahead of you, hit was it a mortar round? Was it just sniper fire? Oh, it was a rocket, it was like an RPG right off the riverbank. We suspected they were they have they were in spider holes on a riverbank, maybe at the end of a tunnel. I don't know, I don't know, but supposedly they'd be in the spider hole, pop up, shoot back in. And... So what what was the response from the the riverboats to that? Everybody stopped firing. And you're firing at the location. Yeah, the so so the soldiers and the navy guys. Well, they were, we didn't have we were waiting to pick them back up. I don't know they were someplace else. Um, I'm not even sure we had soldiers with us that night. Would you drop soldiers off and then go back two or three days later and pick them up? Not that late. Maybe maybe some would. I never experienced that. We we would drop. Sometimes we hang around and they'd uh, just go out. We'd stay in there early, they'd come right back. I had no idea what they were doing. But... Did they ever bring back Viet Cong prisoners with them? A few times I've I've seen them. Yeah, I, I have seen them. They were blindfolded and tied up. You saw this boat ahead of you get hit by a rocket. Um, was that boat disabled or was it able to continue on? No, nobody got injured. Nobody got uh, hurt or nothing. It was then disabled, just went went through the skin of the boat into the uh, whale deck. And they had the round bar armament on the side of the boats. Yeah. Well, the idea of that was rocket would hit that round bar armament and explode before it hit the skin of the boat. Plus, they would put water tanks in between that round bar armament and the skin of the boat. In our case, we had packs of sea rats, sea rats which came in handy, you know. What, and what did you do? How did you use the sea rations? Well, we mostly ate. That's what we mostly ate. But when you having that many on board, we had our pick. We could, you know, 
all of it wasn't very good, but it had some good meals in there. Okay. Oh, I thought you were saying you used the sea rations as some kind of defense for the boat. Well, that's, yeah, but as a storage. But they use it as a storage and also as a, like a defense for the boat in between the skin of the boat and the bar arm of it. So uh, I've never heard that before. So they would you so the sea I'm, I'm not I'm not able to really envision it, but um they would use sea rations sometimes as as another layer of defense against uh well and also for like a carrying supply, you know, supply storage. So you were in the Delta for two months. Um when you uh, think about those two months, when you remember those two months, what's the, what's kind of the the main memory that you have? What's the, you know, what's the strongest getting, kind of memory you have? Getting relieved was the big, was the big memory. I mean, we couldn't believe it. You know, here we are, two months, and uh, the way it happened, I don't, we had to work our way over to the other river. We were on the right side of the slingshot diagram thing worked over up all the way up to the most south post up close to Cambodia and then we get really a boat crew comes aboard and they said well, they're taking over your boat he says, well why he said, well they're turning over the but Nixon pulled out 25,000 troops this is part of the somehow the pull out the drawdown and we're gonna and we're gonna Turn boats over to the beach. and uh, you know I asked that new boat captain. I said, "Why, uh, why are you leaving me? Shouldn't they be sending you someplace else?" And he said, I don't know. got no idea. So, so you you were expecting to be there for a year? Oh yeah, I, I was in country for a year, but not on the boats. They took us. It took a bunch of there's about twelve, fifteen crews that got relieved. So where else? So you were in country for a year then. So you spend this two months in the Delta. Where were you the other 10 months? I went to the Da Nang. You were in Da Nang. Yeah. And what were you doing in Da Nang? I was uh, uh, ammunition stevedore supervisor was the title. These merchant ammo ships would come in. We'd offload them. Well, <laughs> We had Korean oh. crews, Korean stevedores. Myself as the Navy guy, was the Navy supervisor, and I had a Coast Guard guy also with me, and he went by that Coast Guard regulation, but I think it's Coast Guard 108 that handles explosives, ammo, and all that, and proper method and storage and everything. And he was with me. We'd go out on the ship and stay from the time the ship opened up his hatches to it was empty maybe a week two weeks so so this job involves you you had that second mission where you're bringing uh ammunition from the states to vietnam and it sounds like this job now in da nang you're um you're on the other part of that where you're getting the ammunition from the ships to the beach is that right yes they would lo load it into barges Okay. Better in uh, so you're on the other side. craft, uh, LCUs, YFs. Yeah. They would take it up north someplace else, different outposts. And so the and so you did this job in Da Nang for ten months. Right. Did you have any interactions with Vietnamese civilians during your time? Oh boy, I. Well, kind of, I guess you could call it that. We went, uh, you know, when I got relieved down in the Delta, this is an experience. We came all the way down the river to that last outpost. And we were spending the night there. And a new boat captain, he'd been around longer than I, he, he knew his way around that area. He said, let's go out. Said, Where are we going to go? He said, I know a couple of places. I said, I don't know. He's not. I ain't got no. He said, don't worry about money. He said, I got money. I just got paid. So we go out. He shows me around. We come back. No boat. <laughs> oh boy. What's what? Are, now now what? So what, we get somebody had stolen the boat. Huh? Somebody oh, had taken the boat. Oh, no, it got underway. We did. 
they left. Oh, I see. Wow. So uh, we go over to the PBRs. They had a radio shack. We get on the radio. And I guess we called them one of the ships, sport ships out there. And they told us that the new boat captain to get down to, uh, get out to the Ascari sport ship. For me to get down to Dong Dam any way I could. I had no, you know, how do I get to Dong Dam? It was a six hour trip by boat. I don't know. So I slept there with the VBR guys. They had a bunks. He did too, I think. And the next day I go out looking. I'm hitchhiking. No, I got nothing. I got, I, don't, I got my clothes I had on, and that's it. And I go to this helo pad, and the helicopter was getting ready to go. See, he wasn't going to down Dam. So I get to, uh, I see a six by, two GIs in it. I ask him whether they said, we're going down Dam. I said, geez, I need a ride. He said, hop in the back. I hop in the back, throws me an M16 and a bandolier, a loaded bandolier with ammo. You might need this on the way down. Wow. I'm thinking, this is how they make MIAs. But uh, nothing ever happened. You said that um, in 1964, if you're down in the chow hall and another sailor asks you, well, you know, what is all this Vietnam stuff about that you wouldn't have, you wouldn't know. Uh, when you look back on that time in Vietnam, you're there in the Gulf of Tonkin in 64. Uh, you're back a few years later in the in the theater bringing ammunition to Vietnam. And then you have that full year in Vietnam, 10 months in Da Nang, two months down in the Delta. Um you look back on on that whole experience now related to Vietnam. What does all that mean to you now? What does that whole ex that the whole Vietnam thing mean to you now? As it turned out, it was kind of a like a waste. I mean, you know, what we uh, we ended up getting out of there, surrendering really. Is that what it felt like in 69 when, you know, when you, uh, when you know that President Nixon is starting to draw troops down, that feeling that we're getting at well, it, think, it over to the Vietnamese? Well, you think, is this going to work? I mean, I'm not going to complain. He's pulling us out and he's going to turn out, you know, I do that, but. It's, it, did you have confidence that the South Vietnam the South Vietnamese would be able to prosecute the war on their own? I never, I never, I never thought so myself. But yeah, I don't know why. I mean, this maybe depending on the U.S. too much. I don't know. I, I don't know really. Were you paying attention in April '75 when South Vietnam fell? Yes. Uh, where was I in April 7th? I was in the States, okay. Yes. Uh, what what thoughts did you have when you saw that on the news no. that Saigon had fallen? Kind of said it, it was going to, it wasn't going to work. The Vietnamization wasn't going to work. Yeah. And well, they met, they defunded the operation also. So, I mean, that was... Yeah, President Ford asked Congress for resources to help South Vietnam. Congress refused. Yeah, so that was pretty much the beginning of the end, I guess. 